A little over a month ago now, I committed to swapping out this Intel and NVIDIA editing system for a full AMD rig featuring a 7950X and an RX 7900 XTX. So how was it? Well, let's just say things didn't exactly go as planned. Looking to grab Windows at a crazy discount? Head over to scdkey.com at the links below and use promo code BPS25 at checkout to score a sweet deal on Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. Once you've completed your purchase, just click over to your user center, hit the green button to view your code, copy and paste it into your Windows activation settings, and away you go. Check out scdkey at the links in the video description for Windows, Office, Games, and more. I try to be as fair as I possibly can while evaluating new hardware. Biased testing generates unreliable data and improper conclusions, often magnifying the deficiencies of one product and amplifying the benefits of another. This honestly doesn't do anyone any good because when you come here to watch a review on a new component, you're likely doing so because you might consider buying one someday. I have no interest in providing incomplete information and wasting people's time and maybe even their money, not to mention potentially skewing their perceptions and contributing to rampant fanboyism. However, at the same time, it's virtually impossible for me to spend as much time as I need to work out every quirk or idiosyncrasy of a new platform given my limited testing time and the need to constantly produce new content. Maybe this means that my testing is accurate in a broad sense, but lacking in specificity. So with 2022 being the year of the new hardware release, maybe it was best to get to know the new AMD Zen 4 CPUs and RDNA 3 graphics cards on a little more personal level. And that's exactly what I aim to do with this project. I built this beautiful all AMD system in early January, and I've been using it as my one and only production machine ever since. Every YouTube video, every thumbnail, Twitter post, or email that I've fired off over the past 40 days or so has come right from here. And I've kept a log of both the good and the bad things that happened on a daily basis by scribbling notes on this little pad that I kept on my desk. If you wanna see exactly what went into the system, I suggest checking out this video, which I'll also leave a link to down below. But just as a quick recap, I'm using a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Extreme motherboard, a Ryzen 9 7950X, EVGA CLC X360 cooler, AMD 7900XTX graphics card, 64 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, and a Fractal North case. So let's talk about this machine, the things that it did well and the things that it failed at. First up, let's have a chat about the problems that I experienced during setup. Before even loading up Windows, I ran into an issue where I wasn't able to run the memory at the full rated speed of 6,000 megatransfers per second. This has been an issue with AMD systems for quite some time. They just don't play nice with anything more than two DIMMs installed. And I remember struggling with this going all the way back to the original Threadripper. DDR5, once it came out, also launched with similar issues across all platforms, including Intel. But as BIOS has matured, I haven't had this issue on the blue platforms. My 13900K system runs four DIMMs at 6000 without a hitch, but here, not so much. I had to start manually tweaking settings to get it to boot at 5600, and I've been running it at that speed, but honestly, the system kind of seems more happy at 5200, which is unfortunate as you do see measurable performance gains with faster memory, not to mention that I paid for speed that I just can't use. The second thing I noticed right off the jump was that the system was loud, like really loud. Now keep in mind that I used Be Quiet Lightwings fans here to try to minimize the noise profile but I left the EVGA fans on the cooler, which both spin faster and generate more noise. I think this kind of created a perfect storm with the combination of the 7950X seemingly always pushing towards 95C and the Fractal North not being a particularly quiet case because holy hell, I almost quit this product on day one as it sounded like I was inside of a tornado. I also noticed that when doing things as simple as watching a video, my CPU temps climbed to around 70C and the PC would noticeably bog sometimes while the fans maxed out at 
I double checked the mount for the CPU cooler and it seemed perfectly fine. So I needed to find a workaround. I wanted to leave the hardware in place for this. So I, even though the first thing that I should have done would be to swap out the fans on the cooler, instead I went a different route to both get the system cooler and quieter. I got really aggressive with the fan curve, making it so that they didn't spin faster than 50% most of the time, and the fans didn't hit 80% until the CPU was almost at 90C. And yes, I, Brian Stroh, PC power user, engaged eco mode on the 7950X. This was by far the biggest change that I made and one that I would honestly recommend for most people. It didn't seem to adversely affect the system performance in any meaningful way, and overall drop temps and power consumption significantly. While the fans still got pretty obnoxious when I was doing something like exporting a video, the system was otherwise quite tolerable. However, about a week ago, the system developed an annoying ticking sound and I traced it back to, yeah, the EVGA fans on the AIO. Take a listen. Well, again, I think the easiest solution is just a fan swap. I stuck it out for now and just tried to ignore it. This makes a few problems that I've had with this particular unit. So even though I do generally endorse EVGA products, maybe this one is kind of a miss. On an unrelated and mildly irritating note, I noticed that whenever the system was woken up from sleep, the LED color on the memory dims would revert back to red until I manually opened the Gigabyte control software again. This got very annoying for as small of a problem as it actually is. And as a result, I changed my power and sleep settings to never let the PC go to sleep. Problem solved, I guess. So let's talk about gaming. It's probably the thing that I do least with the PC that sits on my desk because I just don't have a whole lot of time for it. When I do find myself within an hour here or there, I tend to spend it in my racing simulator. But for this challenge, I wanted to make sure that I got in at least a few good sessions with a mouse and keyboard. I played Halo Infinite and Cyberpunk 2077 for a few hours each, and I can honestly say it was almost impossible for me to tell what hardware I was playing with. The machine that I replaced had an Intel 13900K and an RTX 4090 in it. And with the notable exception of playing without ray tracing, everything else was essentially the same. The games ran smoothly without any driver issues, the graphics looked great, and there were no crashes, errors, or glitches that I noticed. Overall, a very satisfying experience. But I think we knew that about AMD hardware. It tends to game pretty well. But the biggest question I had was related to my professional video and photo editing workflow. Could it keep up with the rigors of intense multi-layered timelines, adjustment layers, object selection and tracking, and GPU rendered effects? Well, yes and no. In Photoshop, it was pretty hard to tell the difference in overall performance, but it just seemed like the system was always working way harder than it needed to. My Intel NVIDIA system kind of cruised through Photoshop without really breaking a sweat, while the AMD system did what it needed to do, but never without running hot or cranking the fans. I kept track of all the errors and blue screens that I encountered over the last month, and only one came from Photoshop. About 10 days ago, I opened the program and encountered the error, your graphics processor is incompatible. And I had to shut the entire program down and eventually a quick reboot solved the issue. So that might have just been an Adobe quirk rather than an AMD one, I'm not really sure. Adobe Premiere was where I was really worried though that I would face some problems. Overall, timeline scrubbing was actually fairly comparable to what I was used to. I run my preview window at half resolution and even with several layers going on at once, it was pretty smooth. I think we can attribute this to the 7950X just having a huge amount of addressable threads running at fairly high clock speeds. However, I did note that when I added things to that timeline that engaged the GPU, things did slow down quite a bit. Any kind of GPU accelerated effect or motion graphic made it so that I couldn't play through the timeline. And if I wanted to be able to move the playhead over that section of the video at all, I had to fully render and replace that effect in order to continue at any reasonable pace. 
Additionally, effects like Warp Stabilizer took quite a long time to run, even on small clips. I didn't take a scientific measurement of this, but I would approximate that the average Warp Stabilize clip would take about double the time to analyze versus on this system right here. Exporting a final project was also noticeably slower, although since I'm only doing one or two videos a week, it didn't have any real impact on my production timeline. If I were to be using this machine to export multiple timelines per day, it would probably unfortunately be an issue. Now, what about random freezes, reboots, blue screens, etc.? Again, this is one of the reasons that I kept this little notebook on hand as I added a tally every time I experienced something like this. Total, one. The PC randomly froze and required a hard reboot one time over the course of a little over a month. I will say that it was at a very random time. Like, uh, it wasn't like I was putting a super amount of stress on the machine. I was just checking my email one day and it stopped functioning. I had to hard reset the machine as no buttons were responsive, but I am happy to say that it only happened that one time. I also kept track of random USB dropouts. If you're not familiar, when you unplug a USB device from your PC, it usually makes this sound. AMD systems I've used in the past have suffered from this weird bug where even if you haven't unplugged something, you'll randomly get the as one of your plugged in devices becomes disconnected. Usually it will reconnect on its own pretty quickly, but this is pretty annoying, especially if it happens to your mouse or your speakers or something like that. AMD seems to have mostly ironed this out throughout the years, but this never happens on my Intel machine. Over my time using the AMD system, it happened three times. Two of those times, I honestly have no idea what became disconnected as I have a host of USB devices plugged in and I didn't see anything actually stop working. But one of those times it was my keyboard and that was annoying as hell. So what's the verdict? I'd say that I'm absolutely happy that I gave this setup a deeper look. If your focus is purely gaming, it's hard to go wrong with the 7950X or the 7900X TX. Both are very powerful and good at what they do. Just make sure that you have a good cooling solution in place as the processor does run hot. Eco mode, at least for me, was a really solid solution. If you happen to lean more into the professional realm like I do, I can say pretty unequivocally that an Intel Nvidia system is a stronger choice overall, if for no other reason that it just seems to be more stable and better at working through complex timelines. One thing that I haven't tried, however, is an AMD processor with an NVIDIA GPU, and that is what's coming up next. So make sure that you stay tuned to the channel if you don't wanna miss out on that build and the analysis in the future. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.